Hello whiskey fans, how's lockdown treating you? I suppose at the time that I'm recording this probably most of the world is still locked inside their houses but um, now that I've got a bit of time on my hands I've decided to do some whiskey reviews so I've got this one here that I've had on my shelf for quite a while Brooklady from the Isle of Isla 16 year old bourbon cask This nice presentation tin. You can probably see that I'm fairly well acquainted with this whiskey already. Probably a third of that gone. I've actually had this whiskey for quite a while. Um, it was actually bottled in 2008, and I believe I purchased it in 2015. So already by the time that I purchased this one, it was already a bit of a dusty one, been on the shelf for quite a while. I think I purchased it for about £60 here in the UK. And I must say that for £60 I think that is worth every penny, it's a really good whiskey. You can see that I think with all Brooklady whiskies, there is no colouring and as it says on the tin and probably on the label as well, this is non-chill filtered. Beautiful natural colour there. As you would expect, this is being called a bourbon cask aged whisky. It is matured in bourbon casks but they have done something a little bit special apart from the fact that it's 16 years old what they have actually done and it's very clear on the tin here that it's been matured for most of its maturation in Jim, Jim Beam casks and then at some point towards the end of its maturation it's actually been re-racked into what they call fresh oak casks from it's here somewhere from Buffalo Trace. So what you've actually got there, we're probably all familiar with finishing whiskey, but what they've actually done here is to take a whiskey and they've matured it in bourbon casks and then in a way finished it in a different bourbon cask. So not what you would traditionally think of when you talk about finishes where you would normally be talking about sherry or port, sometimes rum. And it's not immediately clear if the second cask that they've used for the finishing, or as Brooke Laddy like to call it, a cask evolution, it's not immediately clear if that is a first full bourbon cask or if that is actually raw virgin oak because it does say on the tin that it's a cask evolution in fresh American oak, which would make you think that it's unused wood. But it does also say on here, 100% bourbon matured. Well, if it's unused oak, that's not bourbon. So it does make you wonder if they've used fresh oak or if it's been an additional first fill sort of pre-used cask that's been used for bourbon already which would normally be the case one thing that I will say is that on the nose and the palate I'm not getting a huge amount of notes that would suggest that it is fresh oak what you often get with a lot of whiskies that are matured in fresh virgin oak especially the, the quarter cask matured or finished whiskies that you get from the likes of Laphroaig and Ardmore you get quite a lot of spice that um, that new oak unless it's a very short finish it does tend to have quite a dramatic impact on the flavor of the whiskey you get quite a lot of raw oak notes as well as ginger and spice and it can people say that the smaller casks and the raw oak help the whiskey to mature quickly 
and it definitely has a dramatic impact in a short amount of time, but I wouldn't necessarily say that the the raw oak adds maturation. It has an effect, but it's not the same as maturing long term in a more traditional cask. But you're not getting that with this whiskey. So if it has been done with raw oak, it's been done very well. So it's a nice full nose, uh, bottled at 46%, as all whiskey should be. I believe Brooklady tend to bottle most of their whiskey at 50% or higher now. This one is quite an old bottling, bottled in 2008, so it's before they uh, switched to the high proof. So a beautiful full nose, lots of sharp fruity notes, very, very sweet and fruity. You've got sort of a contrast between lots of sweet fruity notes and some more sharp, almost lemony. And it's not the sort of fruity notes that you get from a sherry matured whiskey. It's more, you've got that sort of light vanilla from the bourbon cask and also lots of rich caramel notes. Sort of the trademarks of a, a bourbon matured whiskey really. But you've also got some beautiful primary notes from the Brooklady distillate. You've got almost tropical fruit, sort of pineapple juice, maybe mango, melon, sort of apple and banana, sort of fruit salad notes. That, and I think that's coming through from the, the Brook Lady distillate, which aside from whatever cask it goes into is always nice and bright and you can really taste and smell the quality of the barley. And again on the palate I'm getting some tropical fruit notes and sort of sharp fruity lemon citrus notes, very very clean. And there's a, a nice dry edge coming through as well from from the bourbon cask, possibly from the additional cask evolution, as Brook Laddie like to call it, of that additional cask. I think possibly some of that dryness is coming through from the barley as well. That is something that I do like about any whiskey, where you can actually taste the barley, the malt, where you get cereally grain notes. Everything's not covered up by the cask. It's nice when you do have that range of flavours coming from the whole process. Actually getting, actually getting a little bit of smoke there as well. And I'm not suggesting that this is peated in any way, because I'm almost sure that it's not. If you want peat in a Brook Laddie, you need to go for the Port Charlotte or the Octomore. But I think that, that slight smoky note, again, it's almost certainly coming, coming from the, the barrel, maybe the char of the barrel or possibly a, a dry hint of smokiness from the, the malted barley. I'm also getting some biscuity notes coming through, which as well would come from the malted barley. It's always nice when you get a whiskey where no one flavour really 
overpowers or dominates or drowns out any of the other flavours, which is definitely the case here. It's actually one of the reasons why I do tend to like the bourbon matured whiskies, because you, especially with some finished whiskies, you can tend to get some heavy sherry or especially Pedro Jimenez port notes, which can really bully and dominate the profile of the whiskey, and you lose so much. But here we can definitely see that, um, especially with uh, the 16 year maturation, you've got a very well balanced whiskey. Lots of complexity. On the palate, you've actually got quite a nice oiliness, which I think, again, comes from the malt. Um, which is a certain type of oiliness that I quite often get from the older whiskies, especially even older than this, maybe going up to sort of the 20-year the mark, you get this nice oily malt, sort of tertiary flavours that come from the combination of the distiller and the cask flavours that you don't necessarily get from one or the other, but which come from spending many, many years in the cask. Just just something that you can't rush, you can't force into a whiskey. It's lovely to have the option to taste a Brooklady at 16 years as well. It's, um, it's actually become more difficult in recent years to find Brooklady at uh, around the 16 or older age range. You generally have to go to the, um, the Black Art, which is generally, I think, usually over 20 years old, or some of the more special releases. You used to get um, a Laddie 10, and a Laddie 16, and a Laddie 22, but sadly they've all been discontinued. So this isn't a whiskey which you're going to find readily available just anywhere. You're probably going to have to dig a little bit harder to find this one. But I do often find that you can have some luck looking at um, the more sort of small independent sort of news agents, soft licenses and wine brokers are quite often find that things like this they might be kicking around at the back a bit dusty but if you do find things like this especially from Brooklady you can quite often get quite a bargain quite a good price on some of these old sort of obsolete forgotten bottlings Yeah, bourbon perfection. Really is bourbon matured whiskey sort of taken to the extreme. Wonderful. So what mark am I going to give this? I think I'm actually going to change my mind after tasting that one again. I'm going to give this one an A-. minus. Very solid mark there. Really good whiskey. Thoroughly enjoyable and really want to pick up if you ever get the chance. Cheers.